for this example, we're going to have a rod that has a length of 90.0 centimeters. Actually, before I do that, I need to do this small part. This was called, what did I call this? I called it row, yes, but it has a specific name we used for this one. How about somebody raise their hand if they say actually know the answer? <laughs> it's equal to mass divided mass per unit volume. So this is called volumetric mass density. There are all sorts of densities. You, you generally just refer to density. When you refer to density, you mean volumetric mass density. You can actually also have volumetric weight density, which would be the force of gravity for a unit volume. We don't really deal with that very often, but just to give you a, a concept of rather than a mass density. We're also going to eventually deal with volumetric charge density. That's not for a ways, though. We are going to talk about <coughs> linear mass density, or I'm sorry, this was going to be surface mass density. And we're also going to have linear mass density. Linear mass density would be mass, mass per unit length. The symbol for surface mass density is that guy. That is a sigma. It is a lowercase sigma, and that's what it looks like. Linear mass density is a lowercase lambda. Now, surface mass density is actually something we're not going to deal with all that much, but surface charge density is, so I put it in there for completeness sake, but right now we're mostly going to deal with volumetric mass density and linear mass density. So we have a rod that has a length of 90 centimeters and it has a linear mass density equal to 75.0 minus 75.0x uh, squared grams per meter. So as you move from left to right across this rod, what happens to the density of this rod? <coughs> it decreases. Note, it's not, it doesn't like decrease in size, it's just the density decreases. So as you move from left to right, the density is going to decrease. We are going to figure out the center of mass, the x center of mass of this object, which is equal to one over the total mass integral of x dm. Before we do so, it's slightly more complicated because we have to actually first figure out the total mass of the object. So we have an object that looks like this. It has a length L, which is 90 centimeters. And we're going to figure out the total mass. Now, the total mass is going to be the integral of dm. Anytime you're trying to figure out the mass of something that you know the linear mass density of, for example, you could go through and just take the integral of dm, right? That's just going to be the mass. But we don't really know how to do that yet. So we need to take the integral of something we can actually take the integral of here. So we're going to rearrange dm like we did before. Now, dm is, again, a small piece of this rod, dm, right there. It is located a distance x from the x-axis. And what is the width of our infinitesimally small part of this rod, dm? Okay. 2r. It is not 2r. Say again? D. It's actually, no, that's okay. You're, you're missing the fact that this is going to be an infinitesimally small width of this guy. Parallel. D. 
dx. dx, right? So anytime we're referring to something that's infinitesimally small, we generally put a little d in front of it, so it's going to be dx. So that is going to be the width of the object. This means that the linear mass density of this object, which is equal to mass per unit length, is also equal to dm divided by what, Travis? The linear mass density would be the total mass divided by the length of the whole thing, or the mass of the little piece divided by dx, the width of the little piece. In other words, dm equals lambda times dx. And we have an equation for the linear mass density. It's 75 minus 7.5x squared. So this is equal to the integral of, and we can substitute in lambda times dx. So we do, we're integrating lambda with respect to x. So we get that the total mass is equal to the integral of 75 minus 75x squared with respect to x. What are the limits on this integral? Limits on the integral. Here? Zero to L. Zero to L. Now, in this particular case, we have a value for L, which is 97 centimeters. So I'm going to do from zero to 0.9 in terms of meters. Right? So we're going to integrate. Uh, please. Oh, the integral. So we have 75x minus 75x cubed divided by 3 from 0 to 0 0.9. So 75x minus 25x cubed from 0 to 0 0.9. So 75, 0 0.9, minus 25 times 0 0.9 cubed. It's not. What? It's not. It's not about what it should or shouldn't be. Oh. Right? You gotta change it. Everybody relax. Give me a number. 49.275. 49.275 with say fix 49.3. 49.3 what, Vlad? Grams. Grams. So all it means is that we get the mass in grams. If it had been in kilograms per meter, we could get it in kilograms. So that's all it means. So we have figured out the total mass. We also want to figure out the x center of mass. You should be able to tell me uh, something about the location of the x center of mass. Who can give me something about where we should expect this center of mass to be? The silver. Left of center. Left of center because? It decreases in density as we go from left to right. Therefore, we should expect the center of mass to be left of the um, geometric center of the object. OK, so x center of mass is equal to 1 over the mass total times the integral of x dm. Nitish, what are we doing? We can substitute in for dm lambda dx. I agree with that. Good. Keep going. Um, see. Can we That's the integral. Go ahead. Can we pull lambda out? We cannot pull lambda out. Why can't we pull lambda out from underneath the integral? Okay. It's uh, not constant. It's not constant as a function of position. So we can't. We can only pull out constant. Sierra. But since we have an equation for lambda, uh, for lambda, we can add 
Let's substitute in the equation for lambda. 1 over mass total integral of x times 75 minus 75x squared dx. Okay. Now we can multiply through with the 75, uh, or with the x here. 1 over mass total equals the integral of 75x minus 75x cubed with respect to x. Uh, Sarah Jane, take the integral form. Oh, actually, no. Let's, okay, Sarah Jane, what are the limits on this? Um, from 0 to L, which is uh, 0 0.9. Correct, from 0 to L. Notice that the limits haven't changed either. So this is very redundant from what we did before. Sarah Jane, keep going and integrate it here for me. Uh, 75x squared over 2 minus 75x to the 4th over 4 with uh, limits from 0 to 0 0.9. Great. So then we actually have all the numbers we need. The x center of mass is going to be equal to 1 over the mass total, which was 49.275, times 75, 0.9 squared over 2, minus 75 times 0.9 fourth power over 4. The x center of mass. Zero point three six seven. What'd you get without meters? Without sig fig. Uh, point three six six five nine. That's good. Six six five nine. So with sig fig, zero point three six seven. And as you said, we do get meters because it was in grams per meter. And if you look, that makes sense from what we said before. Uh, Forty five centimeters would be halfway. So this is slightly less than halfway.